What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to talk about pickle and serialization in python so let us get right into it all right so this video is going to be a very fundamental one a very basic one because pickle is something that we have used in a lot of different videos on this channel be it to serialize a uh, machine learning model of a chatbot or of an rnn generating text or be it uh, serializing some financial data or some financial objects uh, we have used pickle a couple of times here but i never explained uh, on a very fundamental level what Pickle is and how to use it or what serialization is, why are we actually using Pickle, why are we not just writing into some files. So this is a video for beginners mainly. If you have used Pickle before and you know why you use it, then you don't need this video. This video is for beginners that want to understand why we actually use Pickle. Uh, so let's get started with a very basic example. Let's say we have some variables, for example, my text equals hello world and I have my int equals 18, and I have, I don't know, my float equals 7.657, and I wanna store these values uh, externally. So I wanna run the script, and let's say those are not just values that I assign, but those are values that are results of calculations, or this is a result of a string function, so this is something that is the result of a script running. And what I wanna do is I want to run the script once, I wanna get those values, and then I want to store those values into a file so that next time when I run the script, I don't have to actually calculate all those values again, or uh, I don't want to execute some code to get those values again. I just want to load them from the file directly. And we have done this a couple of times uh, with the Yahoo Finance API where we get some data and we want to store it instead of every time we run the script requesting the data again and again. Uh, so let's say we have those values, result of a calculation, and want to save them. What we can do, of course, is we can go ahead and say with open, it's just a basic file stream here, with open mydata.txt in writing mode as f, and we're just going to say f.write my text, f.write my int, and f.write my float. Come on. PyCharm is a little bit laggy today. I'm not sure why. Um, and of course, I think we need to typecast to a string before we can write. So typecast the integer into a string, typecast the float into a string. And then we can just run this script here and we can see that this works fine. So we have this mydata.txt. Oh, I forgot to append a backslash n for a line break. So we're going to do that, there you go. And you can see that we have the data now here in a file. So what we can do is we can delete all that and we can delete all that and we can just say with open mydata.txt in reading mode, sf my text, or actually let's say data equals f.read dot split lines. And then I can say my text, oh, read as a function, obviously, my text equals data zero, my int equals data one, and my float equals data two. Here we can also do the typecasting so that we actually get floats and integers, and then we can go ahead and print that. So I'm just showing you that you can do it like that without pickle. I'm going to explain in a second why this is possible so easily. I mean, you probably already know it. Um, but as you can see, we don't have to define these values. You just have to load them from a file and then you have them back in your program and you can work with them. So this works so well without pickle because those are primitive data types. All a float is, is just a float. All an integer is, is just a number, an integer number. And all a text is, is just a string. Now, of course, in Python, we have classes and objects for everything. So we have methods and so on. So it's not completely primitive. But the basic idea is that we have a string, we have an integer, we have a float. That's what we care about. We care about the value of those things. We don't care really about the state of uh, an integer. We want to know, okay, this integer is 18. We don't want to know, okay, some certain state like uh, attributes or anything of that integer. We have the value 18. That's what we care about. So we can just store that value 18 in a text file and that's it. Now, 
still you can see that it's a little bit more complicated because we need to remember okay where is what and what's data type because who tells me that this is actually 18 as an integer and not 18 as a string somewhere um, and so on so it is it is possible to do it like that and it works for primitive data types but it is quite complicated and the moment I try something more complicated like let's say my dictionary equals and then I have a and A has the value 18 and B points to the value 99. And then I have H, for example, which is 76. If I want to store a dictionary, it's a little bit more complicated. Of course, I can go through all the key value pairs and store them in a file and then load them in the same order. But it's complicated. I need to probably deal with uh, with string formatting, with string functions and so on. Um, so I'm not actually storing the object. And what I can do uh, in Python to store the actual object into a file is I can use pickle. So pickle is for serializing objects. So I can serialize and deserialize objects. I can store objects. I can dump objects into files and I can load them again from those files in the exact same state that they were when I dumped them into the file. Uh, and this is especially useful if we have something like dictionaries or even if we have something more complicated like a person class. So let's say I have, or a person object actually, let's say I have a person class with a constructor and I pass a name and age and a weight. And I say self.name equals name, self.h equals h and self.weight equals weight. Uh, and then I have a function print info or a method print info where I just say print self.name, print self.h, and print self dot weight. And then I have get older, for example, where I just say self dot age plus equals I need a parameter years plus equals years. And that's it. That's the person class that I have very basic one. And now let's say I have p one equals um, a person, the name of the person is Mike. And Mike starts with 25 years of age and Mike has a weight of 89 kilograms. Uh, and now what I can do is, of course, I can go and say p info. Then I can say p older. I can increase the age by six, for example. So he's 31 after that. And I can print the info again. So we can see that this works. If I run this, Mike is now 31 and still has the same weight. Now, let's say I want to store Mike into a file the way that he is after this uh, get older statement. Uh, what I can do is I can use pickle to serialize the whole Mike object with all the state, with the whole state, with all the attributes, with all the connections, with everything that is relevant for the P1 object. I can store it into a file and later on just load it uh, without having to make all this definition here. So in order to do that, I need to import pickle. So I need to say import pickle. And then I can just go ahead and say with open mic.pickle. Now you don't need to call it dot pickle. You can also call it whatever you want. Um, you, you can you can call this ABC dot XYZ. It doesn't matter. But I like to call pickle objects dot pickle so that I know that they're pickle objects. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, and the important thing is that we write bytes. So we want to open this file in the WB mode, writing bytes mode, SF again. And then what we do is we say pickle dot dump the P1 object into the file, into the file stream. So if we do that, we can run this and you can see that we have this mic dot pickle object here. This is a binary object. It's not readable. Some things are readable, but all in all, it's a binary file. So you're not going to be able to read it. Um, and what we can do now is we can get rid of all this. We still need the class definition because we need to know the blueprint of a person. Uh, but I can just go ahead now and say with open mic dot pickle this time in reading bytes mode SF. And I can just say p1 equals pickle dot load from F, and then print, or not print, sorry, then just p1 dot print info, like that. And you're going to see that it still works. So I have not defined p1 anywhere, I just loaded it from this pickle file. And you can see that I have all the relevant information. So if you want to store 
uh, actual objects, more complicated things like dictionaries or complicated objects or whole data frames from pandas and uh, basically everything you want to store that is a little bit more complicated than just a primitive data type. You can do that with pickle easily. You just say pickle.dump and you dump the whole object with its state into a file that you can load later on. And this is very useful because sometimes when you train a machine learning model to recognize handwritten digits or to chat with you because it's a chatbot or if you, I don't know, uh, have some text generating RNN or if you have a big data frame with financial data that you have already processed and you don't want to do this all the time every time you run the script, you want to save the result, uh, then you can just do that with pickle with one line and then you can load the, uh, the same thing into the script without having to go through all the processes again. And this makes pickle quite useful. This is serialization when you uh, when you dump it into a file, it's called serialization. When you get it from the file, when you load it, it's called deserialization. So uh, a very basic concept, but a very important concept. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.